Welcome to the Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Well, uh, the first presidential debate is Monday, September 26. We here at the Late Show will be live that night. Join us, won't you? But it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. But last night, uh, they held um, like a mini debate, like an appetizer debate, uh, an amuse douche, if you will. <laughs> Uh, it was uh, something called the Commander in Chief Forum. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump answering questions about national security. It was the first time the two of them were in the same room since Trump's wedding. And <laughs> it took place right here in New York City on the aircraft carrier Intrepid. It was a great, it was a great night. Once the two of them were on board, a lot of people were tempted to just cut the lines and let it drift out to sea. <laughs> bon voyage! <laughs> bye bye! <laughs> Say hi to the Somali pirates for us. <laughs> now, officially, uh, it wasn't a debate. Hillary Clinton was interviewed for the first half hour, Trump for the second. And in her uh, half, uh, she accused Trump of lying about opposing the Iraq war. And then later, Trump fired back. I happened to hear Hillary Clinton say that I was not against the war in Iraq. I was totally against the war in Iraq. From a, you can look at Esquire magazine from 04. You can look at before that. Now, we did look at before that. <laughs> and there are actually audio recordings of him saying he did support the war, as well as some pretty damning recordings of everything else he has ever said. But the biggest question of the night was how the candidates planned to defeat ISIS. And Trump wasted no time wasting everyone's time. You said this, quote, we're going to convene my top generals and they will have 30 days to submit a plan for soundly and quickly defeating ISIS. So is the plan you've been hiding this whole time asking someone else for their plan? No. But when I do come up with a plan that I like and that perhaps agrees with mine, or maybe doesn't, I may love what the generals come back with. I will continue. But you have your own plan. I have a plan, but I want to be, I don't want to, look, I have a very substantial chance of winning. Make America great again. We're going to make America great again. Just to recap, he has a plan he hasn't come up with, but if the generals bring him a plan that's similar to the plan he doesn't have, he may go with that plan, which he can't tell us about because it's a secret plan that he does not have, Make America Great Again. Did I miss anything? You got it right. Did I miss anything? You nailed it. Is it all there? Yeah. Is that it's all, all there. of it? I think, I think that might have covered all of it. Now, but since last night wasn't technically a debate, uh, there's no real winner, but many have declared a loser Matt Lauer. <laughs> See, the subject was national security, and the Today Show host was an obvious choice for moderator. Here he is weighing in on military intervention uh, in Syria. Last night, Twitter tore him a new tweet hole with <laughs> criticisms New York Magazine summed up by saying Matt Lauer's interviews of Clinton and Trump were a complete disgrace to journalism, which I think is unfair. Come on. A complete disgrace to journalism would be Matt Lauer dressing up as Paris Hilton. <laughs> Although, once again, Paris, that's more foreign policy experience. <laughs> Many critics slammed Lauer for asking Hillary Clinton the same question over and over again. Could you hurry it up already? Right, but you so said that, wait, that you think you're going to cheat. Look, this is an important issue. I know we're in, on TV. We don't have a lot of time. I want to get to a lot of questions. I will talk quickly. So, I'm going to yes, get to there, that subject there, in a second. There was Secretary uh, in the Afghanistan Pakistan theater. I am fast running out of time as briefly as you can. I want to just say one additional thing. I've got 30 <laughs> seconds left. Sorry, Secretary Clinton. Foreign policy is like pizza delivery. If you can't get your plan out in 30 seconds or less, Russia gets a free Ukraine. <laughs> and if last night's. We're applauding Russia invading Ukraine. <laughs> for those of you at home keeping score. And if last night's forum made you think about voting for a third party, you might want to rethink that thinking. Because this morning, libertarian presidential candidate Gary Johnson was on the MSNBC, and he had a little trouble answering a basic question about Syria. What would you do if you were elected about Aleppo? About? Aleppo. 
And what is Aleppo? You're kidding. No. Aleppo is in Syria. It's the, uh, it's the epicenter of the refugee crisis. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Aleppo. Aleppo. I thought you said a leopard. I was like, <laughs> what would I do about a leopard? Probably run away from it. <laughs> yeah. But let's talk about this Syrian town of Alpo. Obviously, that's where they make the dog food. Next question, please. Uh, that is embarrassing. I haven't seen someone go blank like that since I was asked, who is Gary Johnson? Oh, now, oh, I'm starting... I've interviewed him. <laughs> I've, I've interviewed him four times. Seriously, who is Gary Johnson? Uh, no, I'm starting to get the feeling that guy might not win the election. Um, oh, hey, you know what? This is a little blast from the past, but it's news again today. Do you guys remember a fellow named Eamon Bundy? He's the guy who led that standoff with police at the Oregon Wildlife Refuge last year. Yeah, you remember that? Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, he is now headed to court. It sounds like he has a good lawyer because they are fighting for his right to dress like a cowboy at his trial. <laughs> yes, yes. Why shouldn't he be allowed to dress like a cowboy? I mean, for Pete's sake, the judge gets to wear a cool wizard robe. <laughs> a guilty. Expecto. Expecto some jail time. <laughs> according, according to his lawyer, if Bundy cannot dress like a cowboy, he won't seem authentic and the jury won't believe him. Yes, the same way John Wayne Gacy never would have been convicted if he showed up in court wearing the clown makeup. <laughs> Personally, I think Bundy should be allowed to go to court dressed like a cowboy, just so long as his defense team is made up of a construction worker, an Indian, a cop, a soldier, and a biker. All right? Hell yeah! <laughs> I mixed that up. I haven't been to a wedding in a while. This is easily the biggest legal battle over Western wear since our drummer Joe Saylor won the right to play jazz while dressed like a sheriff. Jazz cowboy! Jazz cowboy! Jazz cowboy! Jazz Cowboy, the cattle rustlers are coming to town. You gotta fight them off with syncopation. <laughs> Jazz Cowboy! Jazz Cowboy! Jazz Cowboy! Yeah! <laughs> choo, choo, choo. <laughs> we got a great show for you guys tonight. Jessica Alba is here. Talking about a man I like to call.